Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the next lesson on how to use the cross-platform native plugins 2 inside Unity. For this lesson, I'll show you how to use the Media Library Service. Now remember, this video and tutorial series is sponsored by Voxel Busters, who are the developers of the cross-platform native plugins. So make sure that you check out their content, which I've linked to in the description below. Now the media service of the cross-platform native plugin allows you to get and save images to and from your device gallery. As well, it can grant you access to your device camera. In the use cases section of the documentation, it talks about those same exact principles. So you can take pictures with your camera and access images from your gallery, or you can save images into your gallery. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could even create your own camera app using Unity and these features of the cross-platform native plugin. Now setup for this feature is very easy. All you have to do is enable the media services feature in the essential kit settings and then you can even select which of the three options you wish to use. And so inside Unity I'll open up our essential kit settings. I'll then make sure that the media services feature is enabled and I'll expand it to view and set those three options. Now in the usage section of the documentation it goes through how to code for each of these three options. And the code for each of these options is actually very similar to one another. But first things first, inside of Unity we need to create a new c -sharp script. And I've called this script ig underscore media service. Once you have this script created, we'll open it up. In this script we need to add one namespace up at the top, which is using boxabusters.essentialkit. We can then create five variables. The first is a singleton of this script, so I have a public static variable of type ig underscore media service, which I've called instance. We then have two variables of type gallery access status. The first one is called read access status, and the second is called read write access status. We then have a variable of type camera access status, and this is called camera access status with the lowercase c. And our final variable is a public texture 2D which I've called current image. Once we have these variables created we can initialize our singleton in the start function with instance equals this. For this I've created a public void function which I've called get image from gallery and the first thing that we want to do inside this function is request the status of the gallery permissions. And so we can copy this line of code from the documentation under git read status and I've pasted it in, although we can remove the bool from our variable because we've added this variable up top. We can then do different checks on this variable to see if the user has granted us permission. And so I have if read access status equals gallery access status dot not determined. This means the user hasn't accepted or declined permissions. And so inside this if statement, we want to request permission. And so in the documentation, we'll copy this segment of code under request gallery access for read mode. We're then checking to see if read access status equals gallery access status dot authorized. If this is true, then it means the user has granted us permission. And so we can prompt the user to select an image from their gallery. And so we'll copy the first segment of code under get image from gallery or camera. And I've pasted it into the if statement. Now here we have the function select image from gallery, which will give the user the option to select an image from their gallery. Once the user selects an image from the gallery, it'll execute what we have inside these curly brackets. And here we have an if statement where we're checking to see if error equals null, which is good because it means that we didn't receive any errors. Inside this if statement, we wanna add one line of code where we're getting the texture from the user's gallery and saving it into the current image variable. And so I have current image equals texture data dot get texture. This will then allow the user to access the texture through this current image variable. And so to use this function, we call ig underscore media service dot instance, which is our singleton, and then dot get image from gallery. Now once the player has selected an image from their gallery or taken a picture with their camera, you'll be able to access that texture from anywhere in your project using the current image variable so I have this example code where we're calling ig underscore media service dot instance dot current image. For this, I've created a public void function called take picture with camera. And inside this function, we want to do a lot of the same stuff that we're already doing for the get image from gallery function. First, we need to get the camera access status. And so I have camera access status equals media service dot get camera access status. We can then do our checks on what the value of the camera access status is. So I have if camera access status equals camera access status dot not determined. We then want to request the camera permissions. And so we'll copy this segment of code under read camera access. 
and I pasted it in here. We then have if camera access status equals camera access status dot authorized. If this is true, then we want to prompt the user to take a picture with their camera. And so I've copied the second segment of code under get image from gallery or camera, and I've pasted it in here. And just like the select image from gallery function, the capture image from camera function will give the user the option to take a picture with their camera. Once the user takes a picture with the camera, everything inside the curly brackets will be executed. And we have another if statement where we're checking to see if error equals null. Inside this if statement, I've added the line current image equals texture data dot get texture. Now to use this function, it's the same as the get image from gallery function. We call ig underscore media service dot instance and then dot take picture with camera. Then after the player has taken a picture with their camera, we can access that texture using the current image variable. Now for the third option of saving images into the gallery, things are a little bit different. For this, we have a public void function, which I've called save image to gallery, and this function has a parameter because rather than getting something in return, we want to pass something in. This parameter is of type texture 2D and it's called texture. We can then get the current status of our gallery permissions, and so I have read write access status equals media services dot get gallery access status, and we're passing in gallery access mode dot read write. We can then check the current status. First, we're checking to see if it's not determined. If it's not determined, then we can ask for access. This segment of code is found under request gallery access read write mode. So we'll copy this and I've pasted it here. We then have an if statement where we're checking to see if our status is authorized. If it is, then we can save our parameter texture. So we'll copy the segment of code under save image to gallery. As you can see, for the save image to gallery function, we're passing in the parameter texture, which is the same as our parameter for this function. Now for using this function, I provided this example code, where all you have to do is call ig underscore media service dot instance dot save image to gallery, and then you want to pass in a variable that's holding the texture that you want to save to the gallery. Once you've done all this, we can save this script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, I've created an empty game object, which I've called Media Manager, and I've attached our script to this object, and I've made a prefab out of this object. Now all you have to do is add this prefab to any scene in your project where you want to use one of these options. And then you can use any of the example codes that we already talked about in order to access those functions. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to use the Media Library service. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.